Hi everyone, so this video is going to cover uh, the optical density function in, or I guess, uh, object in uh, the nearest toolbox. So I've put together a fairly brief uh, script uh, just covering a very, very simple pipeline for uh, the toolbox. Uh, basically, I declare my root directory, I load my data uh, using the uh, load directory uh, function in uh, the toolbox. I've also designated that I'm loading a .nears file, uh, so I've already uh, translated my format to the .nears format, and it's going to use the load.nears uh, function, and it's going to be looking for a .nears file. Uh, from there, I designated my data to be the raw data. I actually then plotted my data, which you will see here. So this is raw data uh, per channel. Uh, once I do that, I have the option to draw the actual probe. And I'm actually just going to motor through here. Uh, here's where I actually start my my pipeline. Uh, in the toolbox, it's called uh, the job pipeline. So here I trim a bit the baseline. I uh, designate what I want the pre and post uh, amount to be. So I actually uh, trim the data uh, by quite a bit here. And uh, from that, the next... Uh, uh, step down, I'm actually going to convert my data to optical density. And you'll see basically I, I rename the job and it creates a new list of uh, jobs as it goes along. So J starts as an empty job, so it starts the new job. Um, the uh, pre and post baseline are designated, and then from there I'm adding jobs in. So I use the initial job, I resave as the new job. From there I input into the next line, I uh, use a wavelet filter here and then redesignate it into the Beer Lambert law, save it again. And finally I actually run the pipeline that I, that I designated. I'm going to focus here on the optical density um, function. So once I actually go forward here I should actually have a, uh, there we go, a stop point here. So when I actually run the optical density, first off there's the method up, up above the old kind of old school way to do it was basically this. You take the negative law of the raw data divided by the mean of the raw data. Uh, what that basically shows is that a drop in voltage designates an increase in hemoglobin, or, or, or let's say optical density. Uh, so it's actually unitless in this case. So it turns into delta optical density, or DOD. The actual steps here is it's going to designate D as the data. In my case, it's actually one-dimensional, so it's only going to go through one time. It finds the mean of each uh, channel, and then it's going to pull this BSX function. What this is actually going to do is actually going to add. So all it's doing is uh, plus. It's, it's calling a plus function, but it's going to be itemized. So regardless of uh, size of these, it actually... So mean here, once I step through is actually going to be, um, uh, let's see if it pops up, there it goes. It's going to be 1 by 40, so it's actually a, a one-dimensional object, uh, whereas D is multi it's two-dimensional. So it's going to replicate M over and over until, uh, and so it can item uh, one by one add these lines together. So as I go through, if I actually now plot my data, I get something beautiful like this. So now it's, what it's actually done is, is create basically a zero, uh, a, a nor normalized function now where a draw, it creates a baseline from the mean and a drop in voltage designates an increase in optical density so it would rise or it would drop uh, based on the, the change in voltage. And you can see many, many beautiful colors here. That's basically going to be all of the different channels. So here we actually, by pulling this optical density function, we now have uh, a unitless uh, relative change of optical density.